Hi Earthlings, welcome to this video. Today we're going to do Things I'm Ready to Tell You 2.0. Uh, things I'm ready to tell you that I've been too scared to share before. So I use these videos. I've done one, obviously. This is 2.0. Math. I use these videos as a way to connect deep, more deeply to you, the viewer, um, to kind of share some vulnerability. I just feel like it helps get energy moving, stagnant energy moving. I always feel really good after, and I find it helps people along their path of growth as well, because I think especially during these times, it can feel so isolating as we're on these spiritual paths. You know, they are, they can feel lonely or they can feel isolating and then put on top of that a pandemic. So I just wanted to kind of share what I've been going through. I've been using this time as um, sort of like a force to be reckoned with. You know, it's like I have to rest. You know, there really is no other choice but to rest, to go deep within, to really sort of um, integrate new things that are coming up, but also look deeply within to see what else just needs to come up. So today, I think the first thing I wanted to share with is how important rest is to me, how important relaxation is to me. And in the past, I would put myself in this box that I'm lazy, that I always need to do more, that I don't deserve to rest or take a nap or read a book or even watch TV all day if that's what like my soul is feeling called to. I always create these sort of mental mind games, this mental chatter that like, no, I need to be working eight hours a day. I need to always be on, always doing something. Even like I'll tell myself I'm going to relax and watch some Netflix and then I'll pull in my computer and be like typing stuff as I'm like supposed to be relaxing and watching a TV show. And so I really have this fear of like being called lazy. And I've been doing a lot of sort of work around that of like, I actually really like resting and I like relaxing. I know everyone does, but maybe you don't actually. I know a lot of people that don't, but it feels really good for me to turn off. And also I'm a projector in human design. If you don't know what that is, I recommend you look it up if you feel called to it, but projectors um, don't really create their own energy. So napping, resting, relaxing, leisure is really important to us. And so when I discovered I was projector, I was like, Oh, thank God. I've never been one that's been able to do an eight hour work day. It was always really hard for me to work in an office. I need that like freedom. Um, and so just to sort of clarify, like with projectors, it works best if we only work three or four hours a day, like actual mental work. And then the rest of the day can be devoted to learning or researching or creativity or rest. And so I'm really just trying to reprogram that I'm not lazy. Like if I want to watch TV all day, then that doesn't happen too much, but I don't want to get into the habit of when I do take rest, like either a nap or yesterday I was kind of feeling ill, which I feel like it's a taboo right now to be sick, but I just rested all day and I literally watched Netflix all day and it felt freaking amazing. And now today I feel like I have all these ideas coming out of me and I have like this new inspiration, this new outlook on life. And so it's really just being tender with myself and nurturing and realizing that me, myself, I don't always have to be on. I definitely don't always have to be working. I can do actually the least amount of work and achieve the greatest um, end result. Like that's sort of what I'm going into and I've noticed like the least I do but with higher quality, the better um, output of whatever I'm creating is. It's just sort of that's sort of like the cause and effect. And so I'm trying to let go of like, oh, I'm lazy because I'm not. It's just that societal programming, it's that societal norm. And on the other hand, it's like my partner, he he could go all day, he's just like a machine. Um, and just, if you are into human design, he's an MG. So it doesn't mean he doesn't need rest or relaxation, but his energy is just so different than mine. And I always tried to keep up with him. And now I'm like, and I'd feel shame if I was resting and he was working, like if we were both working from home. And now I'm just trying to own it. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go take a nap, see ya. I'm gonna go read or you know whatever it looks like so that's something I kind of wanted to share with you guys like it's okay to be you know take rest and I'm not actually a lazy person so that's why I'm letting go another thing is as more money more abundance more prosperity comes into my life um, I kind of feel like a fraud having nice things 
even though it's like something I really like, I love nice pretty things. And I think when I was younger, I'm really broke. It just, since I couldn't have those things or do those things, it doesn't all have to be material that I just pretended like, oh, you know, like having nice things is shit and rich people are bad, you know? So I kind of this have this like conditioning that if becoming wealthy or rich or more abundant is going to make me a bad person because what I grew up with, I grew up in a pretty affluent um, area and a lot of the kids were little assholes. Not everyone, but that's just sort of what I grew up with where I'm like, oh, if you're rich or wealthy, you're kind of a jerk. It was pretty rare for me, not until I was older, where I saw, oh, there are a lot of wealthy people out there who have nice things, but they're still contributing to the planet and to the greater good of the collective in the best way that they can. So that's something I'm also, like I almost have fear of making money and having nice things, because what if it changes me? So that's something I'm really working with right now. And so I actually do Lacey Phillips work from To Be Magnetic, so that's something, when I say reprogram, that's where it's coming from. Um, I like sort of like a luxurious lifestyle. And even then I'm like, oh God, are people gonna judge me? But something I need to own, it's, it's okay to want nice things. It's okay to want wealth. It's okay to just, you know, we're physical beings in this physical plane and we're allowed to want whatever we want. We're allowed to desire whatever we desire as long as it's coming from a place of authenticity and not ego, not trying to prove something. So I think that's something I saw a lot too growing up where it's like, you know, people would have nice cars, but it was just to like impress other people where it's like, if I want something nice, it's for myself. Like I'm not gonna post a picture of my whatever, something nice on Instagram to, so people think I'm, I don't know, fly or whatever the hip lingo is. I can't believe I just said fly. <laughs> uh, so you get my drift. So that's something I'm working through too, where it's like, as more wealth comes into my life, it's like, I'm not gonna change into a horrible person unless I'm completely unaware and unconscious, which I don't consider myself unaware and unconscious of the life around me. So it's being, having an open heart to, you know, prosperity, wealth, actual physical money can come into my life. I can start wearing the nicer, higher quality clothes, spending that money without this fear that I'm a bad person or I'm gonna change or I, I don't know, become a jerk. So that's something I really wanna be open with you all. It's like, and I do have this fear of making money too. I'm like, what if I lose it? Cause I was so bad with money. I'm 32, so like pretty much all of my 20s, I had credit card debt, I didn't know how to save. I'm literally learning right now how to actually save money. Like it feels uncomfortable for me to have money in my savings account because I'm so used to it being empty. I'm so used to living paycheck to paycheck that when I do have money, I'm like, so it just sits there? Like that's all it does? And on the other hand, I'm really good at saving if I wanna go on a trip. I can save easy because I'm like, oh, it's gonna go towards this. I'll save like five grand easy for a trip. But just having money sit there for like, I don't know, the foreseeable future makes me really uncomfortable. So I'm working through that too because I want the money to stay. I want to keep growing my savings and, you know, create a safety net for my future. So I have to work through that of like how uncomfortable it makes me feel to actually be making money. So that's something I'm working with. If you guys have been watching me, I'm sure you notice I've been doing more videos, getting on more Instagram lives, more Instagram stories, sharing more abundantly. That was actually one of my goals for this year or like, um, yeah, a goal this year was to share my gifts, to abundantly share my gifts. It's um, getting to that mindset of, you know, you, me, we're all doing each other a disservice if we're not abundantly sharing what we're here for, what our gifts are, what our services should be. And so once I had that mindset where I started sharing more, I suddenly had this fear of being copied or I noticed like some people and you, I'm gonna just say, you can never 100% know if someone's copying you. I get that and so it's just my mind, my ego playing this game where I'm like, Oh my God, they're copying me. Like to me, it was like so obvious. And so then I had this fear of like, what if people keep copying me and like steal my ideas? And I think in a way it is um, a form of self-sabotage of, I don't want to put anything out there because what if I'm copied? So it's sort of like that, what came first, the chicken or the egg? So I just, it's something I really need to let go. And then I was talking to um, a couple friends and it's kind of like when you, when you copy someone else, it's because you want their magic sauce. You know what I mean? It's like you see that they, they have something that you, you want. Um, 
And it's like, well, what are they doing? All And it, it's like, you almost think like, oh, if I just do their formula, it will work for me. But that's not the case because we're all so unique and beautiful in our own right that just blatantly copying someone isn't gonna work for the copier in the long run. So when I was talking to friends about this fear, they really showed me that it's like, A, this individual that I felt like was copying me, they just want my magic sauce. So that's, you know, it's just sort of like a compliment, you know, be, to be flattered that they think I have something really good going for me. And then just realizing too that who, whoever copies me or if I see other people, like I even get really angry when I'm like, oh, you're copying so-and-so on Instagram. I know it's petty, but it's just, again, a, self, a form of uh, self-sabotage. But it, it doesn't work for them in the long run because when you try to take elements of what works for someone, and use them to your advantage, it won't work in the long run because what works for that person is actually their unique, authentic sort of self. You know what I mean? It, Louie, hey. Got Louie in the background just barking at the wind. You know, it's, so it's, it's just sort of like, I had to just be calm and be like, be flattered. If people are copying, be flattered and just know it's not gonna work for them in the long run because what I'm doing is unique to me. It's sort of like, again, my magic sauce. It's just my magic formula cannot be used by anyone else, kind of like our fingerprints because it just can't. It's just, that's just not how it works. It's okay to be inspired by someone and be like, oh, I love how they do that. How can I make that my own? And I think too, it was mirroring back to me in the beginning of my business when I kind of was like, oh, that person's doing manifestation. Maybe I'm supposed to do manifestation. Like it's reflecting where maybe in the beginning of my business, I tried to copy too and how inauthentic it felt. So it's all kind of like full circle. So yeah, that's, <laughs> I just like got out of breath sharing that one. But yeah, that was like a huge fear of mine. It's just like, I, I felt so scared to share that because it's petty, you know, to be like, oh, they're copying me, but it's something that needs to come out and have the energy expelled. Um, so another thing that I'm kind of been too scared to share, but ready to share now, and I think most of you know this, but I recently started channeling light beings, celestial beings, star beings, um, specifically the Pleiadians, and now the Arcturians have come through. The Pleiadians, I feel like, have wanted to connect with me since 2012. I remember when um, it was actually my ex at the time, his dad, we would, as a, I'd go with my ex's family, we'd go to the Integratron out in Landers, California, which is near Joshua Tree. And it's a sort of sound bath, white dome. And we'd have sleepovers in there because the parents were friends with the sisters who um, own and run the Integratron. And I remember his dad telling me about the Pleiadians and the Pleiades and the Seven Sisters. And it really just like antlers, feelers went up. But I didn't follow the breadcrumbs and I for sure wasn't ready to communicate with them. And it's so interesting over the years how they just kept showing up. I even had someone, you know, like a stranger on Instagram message me about them before I started channeling them. So I can see how they kept wanting to come through. But really it's like I have free will and I wasn't ready to communicate with them at all. I, I even like, I started seeing the number 23 and 123 and I'm like, what does it mean? And I heard this voice, it's, it's Pleiadian consciousness. And I'm like... Cool, and I'm not gonna do anything with that. That was like six months to 12 months ago. And so about two months ago, I was getting acupuncture for the first time and I didn't realize like, sometimes they'll put the needles in you and then you have to just lay there for an hour. She was like, no phone, just sit here or lay. And so I was like, well, what am I gonna do for this hour? So I just went into a meditative state and I said, you know, in my mind, whoever wants to come through of the light, please come through. And right away, Pleiadian consciousness came through and they just started downloading all this information into me. And it's from there is when I began my sort of channeling practice. And it's been really fun. Like this is like, I have to say, I feel like I'm like the most on my path that I've ever been. I'm like, whoa, this is it. Like I am on my path. And of course it's not about the destination, it's the journey, but I feel just so in tune with like my higher self and my soul. And it's just been really fun to channel light beings, how they come through. It just feels really fun and easy, effortless, joyful. It's just like this really fun light thing where I'm like, cool, if I can just do this for a career for the rest of my life, I mean, for right now, that sounds good. Let's do it. And they've been starting to transmit light language into me. So that's fun too. 
So thank you guys so much for watching uh, this sort of vulnerability party. I might have a vulnerability hangover. Who knows? But I love you guys. Bye.